As we make our right turn, you can see the University City, City Hall. It's just over 100 feet high, and it's a great looking building. Along this stretch of Lindell Boulevard, which turns into Olive Street, a little bit later, you'll see many architectural gyms and historic buildings that line the street. The Del Mar Loop is a district that is shared with St. Louis and the inner ring suburb of University City. What is up guys, if you're new to this channel, make sure you check the link down below. It shows you an interactive map on all the places that I've made videos on so far. All you have to do is click on the link to the map, and then you can click on a pin which will take you to a link of said place. The Del Mar Loop is a district that spans for about a ninth of a mile starting in University City towards the west and ending in St. Louis towards the east. The district doesn't stray far from the main street, which is Del Mar Boulevard, and it's seen as an entertainment district that offers theater, cuisine from different cultures, and it even features a St. Louis Walk of Fame with bronze stars on its sidewalks, resembling that of the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I not only go through the Del Mar Loop, but I also drive in mad circles around other west side neighborhoods of St. Louis, including Grand Center and the Central West End. Well, let's get to it. Shall we? I do start the video in the nearby inner ring suburb of Olivet before making my way towards the Del Mar Loop. If you want to skip ahead to the Del Mar Loop, or the West Central End, or the Grand Center, or to the part where I saw Nelly, I provided some timestamps down below just like I do with all of my videos. You're welcome. Oh, you didn't see the timestamp for when I saw Nelly? Yeah, that was a bad joke. That didn't happen. Anyway, moving on now, if you're unfamiliar with my videos, I do speed up my videos in order to show more in a less amount of time. You can always keep up with the real time that it takes me to drive in the lower left corner of the screen. Also really quick, as if you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe as doing all of those things helps these videos out with the task of defeating the monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos on other places like this one can be found in my St. Louis playlist, my St. Louis suburbs playlist, or in my Missouri playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. Not long after the video started, we entered University City. University City is home to 34,000 residents, which is down from a 1960 peak population of 51,000. Even with the ongoing development of the Del Mar Loop District, the city hasn't found a way to stop the population drain. The median household income here is $61,000 per year, and 58% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher. The median value of owner-occupied housing units is $273,000, while the property crime rates are slightly above average. Niche.com gives the public schools in University City a C, so those could be better. If you want to see more of University City, I already made a video on that that also features the suburb of Clayton and other parts of the Central West End. University City was founded in 1906 by Edward Gardner Lewis, who bought 85 acres of land in 1902 just northwest of Forest Park, which was the location of the World's Fair two years after in 1904. Gardner Lewis was the publisher of a magazine called Woman's Farm Journal. Very forward thinking at the time, eh? Lewis made University City the headquarters of the magazine, breaking ground for the offices in 1903. Over time, the city developed into one of the first upper-medium-class suburbs of St. Louis. The older neighborhoods of the city feature a unique mix of architecture unlike today's newer cookie-cutter subdivisions. Once we get into the Del Mar Loop, you'll also see some neat designs on the buildings. A 
According to the University City official website, Olive Boulevard was the main route through town when it was first getting to be developed. Del Mar Boulevard was actually named Bon Home Road, and it was a dirt road that turned northwest past Hanley Road to meet with Olive. Today, there's no road that heads northwest past Hanley from today's Del Mar to Olive. Right before we get to the Del Mar Loop, some of the more well-known people from University City include Nelly, Dave Garraway, Bob Gale, and John Hartford. Once again, for more on University City, go ahead and check out my video that I've already done on University City that also features nearby Clayton and parts of Central West End. As we make our right turn, you can see the University City, City Hall. It's just over 100 feet high, and it's a great looking building. Right past that, you'll see a monument in the center of a roundabout, and another similar rounded dome-like building on the other side of the roundabout. The Del Mar Loop was named as such from the streetcars that ran along Del Mar decades ago as the streetcars that originally ran through here made a loop on Del Mar. In parts of University City, Del Mar was named Bon Home Road, while in St. Louis it was named Morgan Street. The name Del Mar comes from the early days when two landowners made the name change. One landowner was from Delaware and the other was from Maryland. Today, the Del Mar Loop is a popular entertainment district and features restaurants from all kinds of different cultures. There's also several different types of entertainment venues here. Much of the development of the Del Mar Loop can be attributed towards a single businessman, Joe Edwards. Edwards opened up his first business in the Loop in the 1970s, which was the Blueberry Hill Restaurant and Music Club, which is still open today. Edwards also started the nonprofit St. Louis Walk of Fame in the 1980s, which which is a replica of the Hollywood Walk of Fame and can be found along the sidewalk of Del Mar. StLouisWalkOfFame.org has a list of all the names who have a star on the St. Louis Walk of Fame. Instead of me saying all 150 of the names, you can visit that website if you want to see who's been added. That way I don't get 1950s baseball guys saying, You obviously have never heard of Hall of Famer Rogers Hornsby as you forgot to mention it. The Tivoli Theater on the right opened in 1924 and was renovated by no one other than Joe Edwards in the 1990s. We now enter the city limits of St. Louis and oh man, you better start watching your back! All right, all right, that was a bad joke. It was just a coincidence that there is a police car there as this area of the city is a safe area to be in. By the way, the trolley line that you're seeing was completed in 2018. However, the unfortunate news is that the pandemic has greatly affected the businesses in the Del Mar Loop, as you can imagine, and recently there have been discussions on whether or not the trolley will continue to operate. Hopefully it can. Also something that I haven't spoken of yet is that another reason that the Del Mar Loop has been a popular entertainment district is because of the presence of nearby Washington University, which you can see a visual of in my last video on University City. One last thing on the Del Mar Loop is that the street has been featured in the American Planning Association, or the APA's list, of the 10 greatest streets in America. It's not on the list every year, but every now and then it does make the list. However, now we're moving on to other districts within the city of St. Louis.
Del Mar Boulevard over time has also become known as the Del Mar Divide, or an unofficial line that separates the black population to the north and the white population to the south. Most metropolitan regions in the United States see some sort of segregation, and it's unfortunate that things are still that way in 2021. However, it's damage done from generations past, and the reality is that it's going to take a while before segregation becomes less of an issue. Here the trolley heads south on De Bolivar Boulevard towards Forest Park. While the population within the city of St. Louis has taken a bigger hit percentage-wise than any other major American city has from a peak population, and the city continues to lose population to this day, this part of the city continues to be vibrant and is seeing new developments take place on a regular basis. Nearby Forest Park is an incredibly unique park with a style, design, and size that you just don't see very often in cities that are this far west in the United States. Once again, another thing that you can see more of in my previous video on this area. To the right is the De Bolivar Place neighborhood which has a mix of historic residential buildings along with newer developments. If I haven't mentioned this 100 times already, I'll mention it again. You can watch my previous video on the area to see some of the homes as I drive along Lindell Boulevard as it borders Forest Park, and that's where you can see some of the nicest single-family homes within the city limits of St. Louis. Not to be Mr. Negative, but to be Mr. Negative, or what I like to call Mr. Reality, St. Louis, Missouri has an estimated population today of 300,000 which is down from a peak population of 856,000. That's a decline of 550,000 people from its peak in 1950, or a percentage loss of 65%. To put that into comparison, Detroit has an estimated population today of 670,000, which is down from a 1950 peak population of 1.8 million residents, or down 1.2 million residents as a physical number, or a decline of 63%. That means that St. Louis has lost a higher percentage of its peak population than Detroit and every other large U.S. city that has seen a population decline. However, Detroit has lost more people from a physical number standpoint than St. Louis and every other large U.S. city. St. Louis and Detroit's crime rates both go hand in hand as well, as Detroit sees a slightly higher violent crime rate than St. Louis, while St. Louis sees a noticeable higher murder murder rate than Detroit. Detroit gets more media attention than St. Louis does, as it's a larger city with a larger metro area, and the abandonment spreads further in Detroit than it does in St. Louis, as Detroit was a bigger city. However, they're both incredibly similar cities when you take away the size difference. Both cities feature cool, older, vibrant neighborhoods like the one that we're driving through right now, where gentrification has rebuilt some of the city, and they also both feature large, crime-ridden neighborhoods that have seen better days. If you want to see those crime-ridden areas of St. Louis, check out my St. Louis playlist where I go through some of those areas on the north side. Now it's time to go back to positivity as this area of St. Louis truly is a gym. Those negative stats are also not reflective of the metro areas that both cities are a part of as well, as when you look at the bigger picture of Metro Detroit, the region has a large successful economy, as does Greater St. Louis. Views from different angles can be seen of the newer high-rise that's on the left on my previous video that I made on the area, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out. What's that, the 200th time that I've made reference to my other video on this area? Earlier in this video around the 12 minute mark you were able to see some abandonments and you'll see more as the video goes on, but it's also hard to not appreciate the multiple streetscapes that you'll see like this one throughout the rest of this video. By the way, we are currently in the heart of the Central West End neighborhood.
Along this stretch of Lindell Boulevard, which turns into Olive Street, a little bit later, you'll see many architectural gyms and historic buildings that line the street. Plus, ahead on the right, you'll see a fountain at an intersection, and that's the campus of St. Louis University, which is a private Jesuit research school. Lots of successful business people went to school there. Now, starting on the right, you'll start to see buildings that are a part of the St. Louis University campus. There are neat buildings on both sides of this street, however, so try to take a look at both sides and rewind it if you have to. On the left ahead, you'll see the St. Louis University Museum of Art. Now we're in the Midtown area and I turn left here before heading back on the same way that we came on the next street over.
You could still see some vacant storefronts on that streetscape, but you could also see that newer storefronts have opened in recent years. Hopefully the pandemic was only just a bump in the road for that progress, which I think it will be there and for just about every other place in this country. Here you'll see a statue of King Louis IX. We are now in the Grand Center District, which is highlighted by a couple of classic theaters off of Grand Boulevard. The Fox Theater will be on the west side of Grand Boulevard, or on the left, while Powell Hall will be further ahead on the east side of Grand Boulevard, or on the right. The Fox Theater was built in 1929 and restored in 1982, while the Powell Theater was built in 1925 and renovated in the late 1960s. Heard this beat in my dream. As we get further away from Grand Boulevard, you'll start to see some places where nature is starting to take over the land. You'll see several really nice older homes that are still standing, but you'll see even more vacant lots where the same types of homes once stood. this beat in my dream.
Well, I do end the video here, and if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos defeat the monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on my channel. Videos on other places like this one can be found in my St. Louis playlist, my St. Louis suburbs playlist, or in my Missouri playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace!